Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna have a look on how to implement stack, generic stack with the help of C++ templates. So let's get started. So at first I'm gonna create a new folder here. Let's name it stack. And in this folder we will perform all of our testing as well as the stack implementation. So let's create a new file. Call it stack.h. This would be the interface of our stack okay and another file which is stack.cpp which is the source file that will uh, contain the implementation of the stack functions and its class okay and the third source file which is our main.cpp we can also name it as test.cpp that will contain our entry point of the program so in this main function of oh, sorry in this uh, main source file we will first include this stack.h and we will create the entry point return 0 okay okay so what we actually want to make is uh, something like stack integer integers okay then we will be able to push something let's say 0 and integers dot push 1 integers dot push 2 so those of you, if you are not aware of uh, how stacks works, then let me explain you in a very short sentences. So stack is an abstract data structure which uh, performs push and uh, pull, like we can push and pop. Okay, so this is like pushing one uh, zero. Okay, meaning we are putting uh, we are putting this zero on the stack. And on top on top of that we have one on top of that we have two okay similarly we can pop it so value equals to integers dot pop okay so it will give us the topmost element this is okay so similarly we can do that again pop so this time this will give you uh, one now there is another version which is peak so peak means uh, it will just look at the topmost element but it will not uh, extract from the stack what does it mean that uh, let's say we have value and integers dot peak okay and if i call it the second time then the answer would be the same two and two because the topmost element is still there on the top of the stack that's why it will return the same value so this is what we're gonna implement in this video so let's start with the interface this is the stack.h header file we will first include the header guard this will prevent this header to be included multiple times in a particular translation unit inclusion of multiple headers into a particular translation unit leads to multiple definition errors so make sure to add header guard okay now we have a class this and we want to make it generic meaning it would work for uh, any type so template type name t so this is the type of our element in the stack so private now um, since this stack has to be dynamically allocated meaning it its size will grow we need to allocate memory dynamically with the help of uh, new and delete operators in the heap so let's do that so this is the ptr or we can also refer it to as data points to stack elements okay and we have another which is the count element count in the stack okay now we have public interface and the interface would be void push t uh, value okay so this is the public interface now we need to take it as const reference because it might be possible that we are passing a uh, constant value literal okay that's why we need to pass it by const reference now 
we will pop and return by value then we have peak so this is const because um, uh, peak won't decrement this okay but pop will decrement this count and push will also do that that's why we we can't declare these two functions as const okay so these are the three common functions that the stack must have push pop peak peak is not necessary but just for utility uh, you can also implement other functions like uh, begin and iterators all this stuff you can do but here we are just trying to understand how to implement class templates okay so one thing that we should remember is that templates must reside in this header file so that whenever we will include this stack.h file into our translation unit uh, templates would get instantiated okay that's why every definition that we're gonna implement must be in this uh, header file if we will um, separate this template definition with their declaration into different translation unit then the template instantiation won't work you will get undefined reference errors from blinkers or other other stuffs you might get okay that's why you should have the template definition as well as declaration into this uh, header file one thing there is exception is that uh, you might want some implementation or some instantiations to be this in, in this uh, source file okay what you can do is that uh, instantiate the templates explicitly for specific types this way you can separate the source or implementation of the stack for specific types from their declaration or their interface public interface okay so what we can gonna do in this video is that we will first uh, implement this tag in this header file and we will try to separate the definition of the templates into this source file okay now as i already said that it won't be possible for any type because for any type the definition of the templates must be visible within that translation unit in which we are using or instantiating the templates that's the bottom line okay so let's implement the first definition and we have pop okay for push at the end of this uh, function we need to increment the count and at the end of sorry and at the end of this pop function we need to decrement the count so if count is equal to zero then we need to throw an exception or we can just exit something like that okay so throw std out of range uh, a stack doesn't have any element to pop okay so this is what we can do otherwise we can store this value let's say data equals to count minus one so this is the top i mean it references to the top most element now we will return this okay so this is how it would work now for the push we must have data count equals to value and then we will increment it now there is one problem is the storage allocation how we will allocate the memory in the heap this is completely dynamic we must determine this at the runtime when we push and pop the elements so let's create a constructor in this constructor we're gonna initialize this count to be zero okay now there is another parameter which is the capacity there is a difference between count and capacity what's the difference let's see so count is the number of elements 
in the memory but the capacity is the entire memory that this stack has allocated even the empty spaces in the entire contiguous space capacity of this stack okay how much elements it can hold okay so this is what it represents so initially the capacity would be let's say one so we're gonna allocate the memory new t let's say one or just capacity okay so now we have this is okay but uh, since the initial capacity is one we must ensure that whenever we push elements this capacity must increase automatically as well as this storage must be updated meaning this contiguous space must be increased okay we need to also perform some copy allocating memory is always expensive so suppose that if you are performing lots of pushing into the stack then how we can ensure that the there would be uh, enough memory to hold all these elements and minimize the number of uh, calls to allocate memory and copying the memory how we can do that so there is a data structure in the stl template library of c++ called std vector what it does is that it doubles the capacity every allocation at every allocation okay so this is what we're gonna do also here so what we can do is while count is less than capacity we can just multiply it by two okay so it will double it up every time this iteration will run okay now and we also must ensure that the capacity has been updated okay how we can do that is let's store previous capacity as capacity then if previous capacity is not equals to capacity then we need to uh, allocate new block of memory and perform copy from previous memory to the new memory block which is a bigger one so let's do that uh, t new data equals to new t capacity now we have to perform the memory copy okay so we can use memcpy so just for simplicity we are just going to use a for loop for size t i equals to zero and previous capacity now new data i equals to data i now we have copied the elements from the previous outdated data to the new data okay now since uh, uh, this is our new data we need to update this pointer also okay and we have to release the previous memory how we can do that is to delete array operator since we have already allocated the memory with this new array array new operator so we must have to delete with the help of array delete operator so let's delete this now we need to update this pointer to new data now this looks fine and this is pop now let's implement the definition of peak uh, if count equals to zero we need to throw std out of range stack doesn't have any element to peak we need to just return data count minus one okay so we have pop then we have push and we have stack is a constructor we can also pass here the number of elements that this stack initially hold which is capacity okay so let's do that also size t dot capacity 
default is one let's add here underscore to distinguish okay so now our definition is complete now let's save everything now we need to go to stack directory now let's compile this main.cpp file you can see that we have no such follow directory because angular bracket search in the standard directory so what we can do is to specify the search directory so include this directory main.cpp main.exe now we can see that we have lots of errors um this is std def okay so size t so let's copy this here and dot capacity size yeah that's okay now let's save this if that works or not okay so i haven't included this header file std accept let's save this now i can see that it is working let's see what's inside the stacks elements which is the data so we will try to traverse through the pointer how we can do that is uh, const t uh, get data so it will just return this uh, data pointer and other thing that we need to implement is the size get count or get size or just size return count let's implement also another function get capacity save this now we have uh, data let's say const t which is integer data equals to integers get data and size t dot count equals to integers dot count get count for integer i count stdc out data this oh sorry okay that seems good let's save this let's see how it works compile this again okay sorry i use stream let's add this save it now you can see that we have zero one two so wh what we are doing is that push 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 so that's why we have zero one two and we are not popping any elements okay so for example if i am popping an element let's say pop so the expected answer would be uh, zero and one only so let's see now we can see that zero and one so if i am adding lots of pops let's see what happens now you can see that we have um, std out of range exception stack doesn't have any element to pop so this is pretty much for this video and in the next video we're going to have a look on how we can hide the implementation details of this stack for specific types into this source file okay so thank you very much i will meet you in the next video